wake up Christmas morning and go to my grandma's and I, I start to feel like I had the flu. Christmas uh, morning. Yeah. Uh, Christmas, yeah. Christmas day. Wow. Go, go, go to my grandma's and, uh, do the whole family thing, you know, afternoon lunch, all that. End up going to my girlfriends at the time and drive into town. I, I lived in Henderson. So I drive into Galesburg and I remember passing around just right around St. Mary's and I just completely broke out in a terrible sweat. Um, light, like I said, very, very lightheaded, dizzy almost. And I get to my girlfriends and I just had to lay down. I, I couldn't do anything. And I'm trying to do Christmas with her and we're trying to exchange presents. She had family coming over. It was, it was a big thing. You know? Right. And um, I just, I basically pass out. Um, I wake up and it's probably five or six o'clock and they have a family tradition of going to a movie every Christmas night, like a lot of families do. Mm -hmm. And we, we go down to the old West cinema. It's not there anymore. It's tore down now. And we're going to see the Titanic and I get sick, like throwing up projectile vomiting. Um, basically I, I always tell people, I, I basically overflowed the toilet at the West cinema. I mean, I had stuff just coming out. I couldn't stop mm -hmm. and, um, end up not even watching the movie, go back home and pass back out. Um, just felt like absolute, uh, the worst you could possibly feel. And all in my head, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, we got a game tomorrow. You know, I got to get this out of me. I, I want to play tomorrow. And like I said, we're state ranked team, right. number two in the state. We're going to go to our Christmas tournament and I'm, you know, I'm still trying to get a college scholarship of some sort. I had, you know, a couple letters here and there, some offers, but nothing, nothing big junior colleges. Sure. But I, you know, I was trying to get to school for free. Yeah. And, uh, so the day after Christmas, uh, her mom ends up taking me back home and I didn't even drive my car back home. She had, her mom had to drive me home. And that entire night, um, my bedroom was upstairs in my house. And I remember walking downstairs and my feet just throbbing, hurting, killing, just the worst pain I've ever felt. Couldn't drink enough water, um, coming out of both ends, throwing up. I, I mean, I was just miserable. Mm -hmm. uh, ended up pulling out the couch downstairs, laying down. My mom comes to get me up at like 5.30 in the morning because like we were getting ready to get on a bus to go to our Christmas tournament. I go to sit up and I had my contacts out so I couldn't really see. And I went to stand and I couldn't stand. The pain was excruciating, like the worst pain you could feel times a million. Just could not stand up. I looked down at my arm and I had like a little splotch of like a purple spot on my arm. I'm like, man, what is going on? You know, like this ain't normal. My mom comes in and she was an LPN, so she knew something wasn't right. Immediately uh, gets my stepdad at the time. They had to carry me to the car, rush me to St. Mary's. And people at St. Mary's saved my life. Um, they started, they knew something wasn't right. They just start throwing me full of antibiotics. And, you know, I'm, I'm laying in the emergency room and I remember coming in and I was just out of it. I, I felt... Um, like I couldn't remember anything. My brain was just scrambled. And I see my grandma coming in and my dad's coming in and they're all crying. And I, I in my head, I didn't think anything was wrong. I, I'm thinking, okay, I, I got the flu. I'm a, right. I'm, Mom, call Coach Miller, I'll, I'll be okay. Tell him I'll be, I'll drive myself to Burlington, whatever, I, I'll be there, or Bloomington, I'll be there. Uh, little did I know I was in for a fight of my life. Right. Um, I remember uh, coming out and they were putting me on the helicopter and I could feel the blades, you know, and just in, still in just excruciating pain. My legs were starting to hurt worse and worse and it was moving up. Like now my knees are starting to hurt. And I'm like, man, what is going on? And I remember grabbing the, the life flight nurse. And I was just like, man, give me something for the pain, please. Something for the pain. And I was out and I wake up and it's like January 9th or January 10th. And they tell me, you know, they, 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 they had to medically induce me into a coma and they woke me up and they tell me, well, you know, your fingers are basically, basically what happened. My, my, it was basically like I got mummified. Um, the, the blood attack, it's septicemia. My, my hands turned black. My legs turned black. My nose turned black. And thank, thank good Lord that, that my nose came back. You know, it, 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 it came back, but my hands and feet and they, you know, they're telling my mom, they were trying to rub this lotion and stuff in my hands and on my feet and trying to get circulation back. They tell my mom, well, it, it's so bad now his finger could break off in your hand while you're rubbing that in there. And my mom was like, well, that's when I knew we had to make the decision to amputate and 10 fingers and legs below the knees. And, you know, as a seven, I was 17 at the time. And, you know, as a 17 year old kid, having that 
told to you, it doesn't process. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you just you just think, man, I'm I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna go play basketball again. You know, I'm I'm thinking, okay, tips of fingers, tips of toe. I didn't look <laughs> at my like they had my hands bandaged up, obviously, after everything. You know, I think it was like the 13th and 14th of January is when they ended up doing the amputations. And, you know, I go through months a month of rehab at St. Francis. I didn't get I didn't get out of the hospital until the end of February. And um I wouldn't look. I, I kept my kept it bandaged up. My mom was telling me, well, you know, your fingers are gone. And I was like, no, I can feel them. You know, the 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 feeling of them still being there. Uh, they call it phantom pains. Right. And 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 it's a real thing. Like you I felt like my hands were there, my legs were like I I, I still didn't have my contacts in, so I couldn't see anything. And I, I just think uh, I'm thinking in my head, okay, I'm fine. I'm gonna be okay. And then, you know, towards the end, you know, I had some physical therapists that were like, look, your life's never going to be the same. And, and they kind of, you know, put it in my head. This, this is how life's going to be for you now. And there were some, there were some tough days. There were some dark days there, you know, right. and, uh, it, it, it was tough. It, you know, I, 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 you know, why me that, 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 that type of thing that creeps in. It, Absolutely. it, it does. And, and being 17, being you're not 17. even the most yeah. mature. Yeah. You, you know, I was still a kid. Um, and I was telling you before, you know, I, we was talking here earlier. I get out of OSF and I go to Shriners. And Shriners Hospital is the most amazing group of people for kids that that uh, that walk this earth. I mean, everything there is free. Everything is taken care of. These are, you know, $100,000 surgeries some of these kids have to get. And I was telling you, that put into perspective for me what, you know, my, my situation ain't that bad. I, I was telling you, I've seen kids that have to spend the rest of their lives in wheelchairs and laying down in wheelchairs and... The, the story I was conveying to you guys earlier that, that really stuck with me was the girl from Iraq. She was she had to be no no older than two or three years old, and her village was hit by some sort of bomb at the time. And you know half of her head was caved in, and her equilibrium was off, and she would crawl two or three steps or two or three crawls, and then just fall over. But then she would get back up, and do it again, fall over. But there was a toy, you know. It's, 15 feet from her and they, they were working with her obviously trying to get her to you know go through some sort of therapy but it, i'll be damned if that kid didn't make it to that toy and when she made it to that toy and the joy on her face you know it, it, it just it put everything into perspective for me you know like things aren't always as bad as they can be things can always be worse you know it, you know i i was given four hours to live at one point they told my mom you know calling the priest he's probably not gonna right you know and you know, thanks to the good Lord. And, and I'm fortunate enough to be here today talking to you guys, you know, and I've, I've lived a great life. It's, it's been, it's been fun. It, you know, I've had obstacles. Sure. Mm -hmm. You know, my, my normal day to day things ain't the same as everybody else's, mm -hmm. but I'm still here and I'm still a productive member of society and I'm helping yeah. raise some kids that are some of the best kids in the entire world. Right. And it's, <laughs> you know, Amen. Dude. Thanks. 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 <laughs> can, thanks. Thanks can always be worse and things can always get better.